Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm sort of delving a little bit into more like language tube? Langtube? Polyglot? I don't, I don't know if there is an actual name for it but today I'm going to talk you through how I learn French. So I've talked about how I have learned French about my French A-level before with Ophelia over on her channel and we did a video. So apologies if this video isn't very good. I don't usually make these kind of videos. If you'd like to see someone who's a lot better at this, make language videos, go subscribe to Ophelia. I will link her channel and all her details down below. She's fab. So a bit of background, I'm currently in my second year of university. I have done my GC my French GCC, my French A-level, which I did pre-U, was different. Same. Um, so yes, now I'm a university student and I'm still learning French. I take comparative literature and with my degree there is a language requirement, like you have to you have to take a language and incorporate it into your learning. So I do French. So I'll start with that. At uni I take French classes. It's every week and it's two hours long. This is the textbook that we need to do. I'm currently taking B1. I think the, like the higher end of B1, something like that. This is the textbook we have for it. I'll completely level with you. I hate textbooks. I absolutely hate them. I just don't understand how else you can learn from them. I only understand them as like part of the lesson. I just, is there really any other way you can use it? I really don't like textbooks. Two hours a week obviously isn't very much and I don't think they teach very well either in complete honesty because the class sizes are very big and that's just not, for me, that's just not good enough. I'm dyslexic, so I struggle a lot with language learning, and at the moment I'm only properly starting to realise the extent to which my dyslexia affects my ability to learn the language. Um, and also noticing like I'm more dyslexic in one language than another, which is very strange. I can't cope very well with like that kind of environment. Like they speak it, like exclusively French to us, which obviously I'm pretty fine with. Um, my big issues are grammar and if they don't really explain that very well that's an issue because obviously if the entire class understands and I don't I'm not exactly gonna put my hand up in front of like 15 people and go I don't get it like I don't I just, it's not you kind of just can't emotionally do that and you might be thinking you should but are you gonna fucking put your hand up in front of 15 other people who understand and say that you don't understand no um <laughs> I'm on the defensive now, okay. At the moment, I'm keeping everything in this little textbook. Oh, it's too bright for you to see that, unfortunately. Ooh, there we go, there's a bit of, yeah. I much prefer sticking sheets in. I can't handle loose sheets, piss me off far too much. So I keep everything in there, actually regardless of the institution I'm learning at, because it's just nice to have everything in the same place so I can actually see it and then I color code things and I organize it and it's just a lot more clear to my mind, um, which actually leads me on to the second thing. Obviously, as I said, two hours a week, it's not very much at all if you're trying to learn a language. The other thing I'm currently doing, which is probably gonna get, as time goes on this year, more and more intense, is um, I'm currently doing Alliance Francaise. I'm not sure if it exists in the States, but in the UK it's just, just French teaching classes you can take. Learning, French learning, French classes. The textbook we use for that one is this, and again I'm B1, but I think they split theirs up even more. So last summer the class I took was two, C and now I'm 2D and then I would go up to 3A and then it, like because they split it up even more so you can get much more targeted learning like to your level. Again I find textbooks kind of, I just don't enjoy textbooks at all. The thing I like much more about Alliance Frances though is the last time I was there at least the class was three people including myself so it was very very small so you're you can't hide and that's the thing that's always I've always struggled with is the fact that if it was a class big enough to hide I would and I've become a master at slipping through the net but then obviously that does fuck me over like I don't mean I don't, I don't have an intention to do it it just kind of happens and I think a lot of it is to do with like this anxiety of like I don't know anything I don't want to look stupid in front of a bunch of people who do so it was very nice to be in an environment where like those people were exactly the same level as me and it was also nice because they were they were grown-ups so I felt a lot better about myself knowing that my French was as good as theirs is but they're much older than I am. That was very good for my self-confidence as well I think they just sort you a lot better than my university does in terms of putting you with people who are your ability. That said I did move up a class at uni, I was very proud of myself, I was like this class is too easy so I left. Um, so that was great for my confidence, mainly for me, like, my, my French is a confidence issue. With the Alliance Francaise, it is a lot more discussion-based, it's never silent. They don't teach you very much grammar, though, and when they do, they do it entirely in French, and I got told off because I kept asking, please explain this in English. How can you, like, how can you explain grammar to somebody who doesn't understand it 
in in the language like that if it, it's far too hard for me so i was like please explain it in english i felt very stroppy about it but i'm like i need this just do me a favor I'm actually going to do a whole video on how like trying to learn a language is very much affected by dyslexia like by my dyslexia it makes it so hard but like I said I've only recently been aware of this and it's only recently started coming to light how how much it affects my like French so if you're interested that video will appear at some point you can of course subscribe to stay tuned so I like that a lot more because it's discussion based occasionally we do have to hand in some kind of like homework some written stuff um which actually like at uni we don't and that kind of annoys me because she doesn't really, like, you don't really get that much set work. And also, if they don't check it or that kind of thing, then it's a lot harder for me to be motivated to do it. Which I know is bad, and I know it's my responsibility. But I do want to be, like, can you just not give us a bit more accountability? I mean, you can argue, like, yes, you're grown up now, you should be responsible, but please, hold me accountable! Come on! In London, it is actually very easy to sometimes try and practice your French if you're out about. I did this earlier, like I was walking behind this woman and I could hear she was speaking French on the phone and all I did was eavesdrop and try and like figure out what she was on about. It's actually surprisingly helpful, um, at least in London there's a huge French speaking population so that is very useful, just be like, ooh, what are you on, what are you talking, what, what is happening Tuesday and, Tuesday and Sunday, ooh, really, what is, what is, what is the thing that keeps going wrong? <laughs> well it does always help, so it kind of meant that I didn't, usually I would overtake them but I kind of like held back and like listen just a little bit longer which is kind of creepy but it is very <laughs> useful so on to the more nitty-gritty stuff as i've mentioned i can't fucking do grammar i can't i can't fucking do grammar i don't know what's wrong with me i do i'm dyslexic i can't do the grammar but if you want a good vocab thing this is what we used at a level my boyfriend had been given the spanish version of it so i just put myself the french version this was good for a level i really recommend it i actually really like it because you just learn all the little lists and then I like learning the little lists. I don't like having to find vocab myself or if like, I like being given a vocab list. That's, I like vocab lists because then, okay, then I have to do less of the work, but then more of my energy can be directed on what needs to be done, you know? Instead of me having to go find it, that's already like part of my energy used. I might as well you conserve it all to just learn the words. And they split it up thematically, which I really like. It does mean that you will end up with some absolutely useless words. Oh God, you end up with so much like useless, really, really pointless words. But then again, you can argue no word is pointless, but like you, we all know there are some fucking pointless words we end up learning. Like, pont is not just a bridge, but also the deck of a boat. I hope that's right, that would be ha mortifying if I got it wrong. On to grammar though. Right, okay, I'll not start with this one. Oh, who? So who's had this? I think a lot of people have had this. It causes me internal pain. I don't like the sex book at all. I think it's pants. Not that I didn't try, as you can see, with all my like sheets in there. I find this a very, very difficult textbook to use, and I got a lot wrong all of the time. It just did not help me at all. And even though I would try and sit down, this is during a level, I try and sit down and like just learn some of it. Like it goes when it out, in one ear and it's out 10 minutes later and I have to learn the whole thing over again. Which as you can imagine is very demoralizing and very emotionally painful. I don't like this. If you are dyslexic, I don't recommend it. Okay, I suppose in conjunction with this one, this should be renamed French Grammar for Idiots because it explains everything to you so easily. Like, as if it really assumes your level of knowledge is zilch all throughout so it doesn't like you, it's not like you flick to one section of the textbook and then suddenly it doesn't explain things anymore i've gone quite blue hang on let me change that now i think i look a bit more pink but less blue anyways it's always consistently like we know this is hard for you so here we go because i think a lot of the things is i don't understand the grammar in english i don't know what an auxiliary verb is i don't really understand present or past participles I don't understand the whole object subject thing. I think it's because it's something like ab abstract in that kind of way that I can't, my brain just cannot understand it. So then you're trying to teach me something I don't understand in a language I don't understand with I with I did things that I don't understand. They're just, it's just not. It just doesn't work for my brain at all. So this is your friend. It's just wonderfully, wonderfully simple. It explains everything at length as well which is very good so what I would recommend is first learn it in here then learn the same grammar point in here and do the exercises because obviously the, the, the advantage of this is there are exercises that you can do 
um, and the question and the answers are all in the back. So of course that is it's very useful. Now I am too orange. <laughs> this is why you don't film a golden hourglass. This is why you don't film us for sunsets. And now I'm blue again. How is this working? <laughs> so that is how I learn French. I have to be taught. I also have quite a few French speaking friends. I don't know why I don't speak French to them, but I do. Actually, I do know, because one of my French friends, whenever you try and say anything French to her, she's kind of go, eh? And then be like, ah, oh, that's the last time I do that. Um, <laughs> if she's watching, she'll know I'm talking about her as well. There's no escaping that. Also, my motivation for doing this video is to remind myself to learn French. Now I'm fucking purple. God's sake! Is I really, really want to do study abroad um, this year. Like, I really want to do it. And so my plan is also, um, currently the classes like, with Allianz Francaise I'm doing are once a week. So that's two hours once a week. But then, because they offer different intensities, which is fantastic, um, my plan is to then go twice a week. Then you have a two-week intensive course, which is every single day. Um, and then you can even have um, private tuition. So, we're going to, like, amp it up like that. Because having study abroad it is some it is a goal. It is something to work towards with my French, which I didn't really have last year. I didn't do any French last year, which is like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you idiot. It's also because I've switched courses. I was doing comparative literature with film, which meant that you didn't have the language requirement, but now I'm just doing complete so the, the French now. Um so I just really wanna amp it up and just I want to just speak French. It's so frustrating. I've been learning this since I was nine years old. For God's sakes, nine. And the fucking thing is, every time, whenever I am in France and I'm speaking to a French person, just me, like my mum and dad aren't there going, um, I always get told that I speak really good French. So it's very emotionally painful. Oh, and of course I watch French YouTube. I watch a lot of French YouTube. Um, thank you for your suggestions. Uh, quite a few of you left them on a video I did about speaking Flemish. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. I do watch quite a few French films. Um, I've seen quite a lot of a, quite a lot of Agnes Verda's films. Look at me, I'm so cultured. <laughs> but of course, if you have any like favourite French language film recommendations, I would honestly die to hear them. So yes, this is everything I do to try and teach. Oh, ha, I know another thing I do all the time. I have a rule which is I do not buy skincare unless it has the French on the bottle. If you can't sell it to a French market, I won't buy it and I won't put it on my face. So uh, my my makeup related French is fantastic. Um, not that I ever get to fucking use it. And then if I was in class with all the boys, I wouldn't exactly be able to like whip out my magical like beauty related words because that's never gonna come up in a conversation. <laughs> but I am really excited if I get to go to Paris because Sephora! Yeah! Okay, the lighting's gone to shit. I've talked enough. Please leave me anything that I haven't mentioned that you do that really works for you, especially if you are dyslexic. This I really, really mean. If you're dyslexic, please, please let me know what has worked for you because I would really, really highly appreciate that. The English language system is already terrible. For dyslexics, it is even more terrible. So, yes, your advice would be very, very much appreciated. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I will see you guys very, very soon.